members of the audience, a pleasant good day and thank you all for taking the time to be here today for my presentation on subsidiary project plan requirements for public construction projects in Trinidad and Tobago, a study conducted by myself, Amun Zabal, with the assistance of Mr. Derek Aldridge. years, public construction projects in Trinidad and Tobago has experienced significant schedule overrun. And as a result of this, in 2010, the government of Trinidad and Tobago mandated a commission to inquire into particular aspects of the construction sector in Trinidad and Tobago. This commission of inquiry is commonly referred to as the 2010 Off Report, which found that public construction projects in Trinidad and Tobago suffered delays amounting to as much as four times the original contract period with others ranging from one to 15 months. These sources of delays were then found to be incomplete designs, design errors, design changes, and the fast tracking approach applied to the construction projects being executed. Over the years, public Looking into these sources of delays show that they are due to a lack of project planning at the design management stage, specifically issues with the project's subsidiary project plans. Now, what are subsidiary project plans exactly? These are the smaller detailed plans which make up the final product of the project management plan prepared during the design management stage of a construction project. Looking in the subsidiary project plan programs and directs the project by defining the methods to achieve the project goals and deliverables, detailing all project execution plans and activities on monitoring and controlling techniques. They take into consideration all foreseeable factors and influences on the project activities to make sure that you can have more effective management and reduce uncertainties, which will further reduce costs and budget overrun possibilities. So these are commonly known as the scope management plan, your cost management plan, time management plan, quality management plan, etc. Back to the off report. In addition to just identifying the issues involved with schedule delays, they went further to recommend steps to aid in reducing the schedule delays experienced. And one of the main recommendations the off report gave was the creation of a standard procedure document for the construction industry of Trinidad and Tobago, which should ensure that designs are completed prior to project tendering, variations be approved only for situations which were foreseeable at the design stage, and the sensitive to discourage the acceptance of incomplete designs. To date, no official attempt has been made to follow through with those recommendations made in the off report, which thus brings about this study, which seeks to kickstart that motion. So this study, we outlined a couple of objectives. First and foremost, we want to determine the significance of subsidiary project plans at the design stage of public construction projects in Trinidad and Tobago. And in order to do that, we first needed to determine what subsidiary project plans are produced at the design stage of public construction projects in Trinidad and Tobago, then to evaluate the impact the subsidiary project plan has on project schedule. And once those are done, we then sought to propose an optimum set of subsidiary project plans that must be produced at the design stage of public construction projects in Trinidad and Tobago. For this study, a null hypothesis was set. Subsidiary project plans are not significantly produced at the design stage of public construction projects in Trinidad and Tobago, which introduced the alternative hypothesis, subsidiary project plans are significantly produced at the design stage of public construction projects in Trinidad and Tobago. For testing this, this hypothesis, the independent variable was each subsidiary project plan, while the dependent variable would have been project schedule.
The methodology employed for this study was a mixed method approach, which was adopted from a study done in Nigeria by Idaro in 2012. Idaro compared levels of use of project plans and performance of traditional contract and design build construction projects. For our study, we collected qualitative data from a literature review and quantitative data from a questionnaire survey, primarily which was distributed to construction related professionals actively operating in the industry of Trinidad and Tobago. And we kept it open to all different types of professionals acting in the construction industry, as well as um, those having different variations of years acting in the industry, just to ensure that we don't get no sorts of bias responses. Yeah, we have just a chart showing our research design from the problem identification to the development of the research problem to the research questions, which gave us our hypothesis and the aim. And then we got each objectives from the aim. Once we identified each objectives, we determined how we were gonna achieve them, whether it be from the data collected in the literature review, and we come to some conclusion, or from the statistical analysis, which would have been done from the data obtained in the questionnaire survey. Now, in order to collect the data to be used for this study, we had to determine an appropriate sample size. So the population which we took our sample from was the construction professionals actively practicing in the industry in Trinidad and Tobago. And then using Cache 1965 formula, we got a sample size of 64. Then once the data was collected, we chose to assess it through a standard multiple regression analysis in SVSS. This was chosen because the standard multiple regression analysis looks at the influence of the independent variables on the dependent variable. So what this would do for us is look at the influence of the subsidiary project plans on project schedule. It would look at that direct relationship. And then from there, we can then be able to predict a best fit model in relation to the dependent variable. And then finally, in testing the hypothesis, we applied the one-way ANOVA test on S in SVSS. Now, onto the results of the study. Firstly, we needed to identify and confirm the main issues with subsidiary project plans in public construction projects of Trinidad and Tobago and its effects experience as a result. So what we did was we took the data acquired from both the questionnaire and the off report and did a comparison between both to see if there were any similarities in the information gathered. So both the questionnaire and the off report show that a lack of completeness of the subsidiary project plans in a timely manner slash the lack of timely design submission resulted in incre increased costs and time on projects. Further, the lack of quality of subsidiary project plans produced or the incomplete and inadequate project design also resulted in incre increased costs and time on projects. So both data sets corresponded with each other, which confirmed for us that these really are the main issues of subsidiary project plans on our public construction projects. So from this, we were able to then move forward with more of the research. Now looking into the actual production of each subsidiary project plans on public construction projects in Trinidad and Tobago, the questionnaire survey required respondents to firstly rate the importance of each plan on a scale of zero to five, which was not important to very important. And then after they rate the importance of each plan, state whether or not this plan is commonly produced on projects. Based on this table, we can quite clearly see that every subsidiary project plan was either important at four or very important at five. But then when we look at the columns for commonly produced, we are seeing numbers like 52, we are seeing numbers as low as 16 for the procurement management plan, and the highest we have is 53% for electrical drawings, which tells us that 
even though each plan is critical or very important to the projects, they are not being produced. So once that is not happening, then the projects will obviously suffer in some stage or phase. Here we have just a few more of the subsidiary project plans and its relative importance. Again, from this, we can see that a plan such as the value engineering report, which is written at a level four, being important, is only commonly produced at 10%. These numbers just confirm for us that regardless of the high importance of all these plans, its required level of production for the success of our projects are being neglected. The study then went on to ascertain the direct level of impact each subsidiary project plan has on project schedule delays. This was done by applying the standard multiple regression analysis in SPSS, which explored the degree to which each plan directly impacts the schedule and the predictability of the effect occurring. Right, the following two slides shows this the results obtained from this analysis. The primary observation made from the standard multiple regression analysis was the significance of the data to the resulting best fit model, i.e. the p-values. The best fit model tells you what subsidiary project plans are required to ensure project schedule success. So what we got from the results was that all the subsidiary project plans, except for the procurement management plan, the logistic plan, and the resource system are required on a project to ensure project schedule success. This was concluded since all of the plan except those three gave SIG values of less than 0 0.05, showing that they contribute significantly to the best fit model. From the standard multiple regression analysis, we were able to now determine which were the most critical plan to project schedule success. And with that information, we then populated this table to give you the 15 most significant subsidiary project plans to project schedule success. And these were in order of level of importance, structural drawings, architectural drawings, bill of quantities, electrical drawings, cash flow, procurement management plan, mechanical drawings, risk management plan, quality management plan, civil slash slide design, stakeholder management plan, constructability report, logistics plan, health and safety plan, and the value engineering report. These were the 15 most significant subsidiary project plans to project schedule success. The results of the one-way ANOVA test on the hypothesis of the study indicated that no significant difference between the mean of the level of production of subsidiary project plans in Trinidad and Tobago existed. Therefore, it failed to reject the null hypothesis, which proved that subsidiary project plans are not significantly produced at the design stage of public construction projects in Trinidad and Tobago. In concluding the study and investigating into the sources of the severe issues identified in the OFF report, it was found that the lack of subsidiary project plans developed at the design stage of projects to be the main contributing issue. The primary statistical analysis done in this study also revealed that significant subsidiary project plans are not produced at the design stage of public construction projects in Trinidad and Tobago. As a result, and in attempts to curb this issue, this study proposes a minimum set of subsidiary project plans to be, to be produced at the design stage of public construction projects in Trinidad and Tobago for standardization. Now, moving forward, once this list can be standardized, the final goal is to create it as a standard procedure document as recommended in the OFF report for our construction industry, which will therefore ensure that every public construction project moving forward will have at least a minimum set of subsidiary project plans to ensure project schedule 
and by extension, cost success. So moving forward, So moving forward, what do we recommend with our So moving forward So moving forward, what do we recommend with our main findings? As I end my presentation today, I would like to thank the members of the audience once more for being here today and giving me your attention and your listening ear. And any questions you may have, please feel free to forward them to either of the emails shown here or the WhatsApp contact number. We both look forward to your questions. Thank you and take care. As I end my presentation, Okay, so the, um, unfortunately we do not have time for any questions, but you may email your questions to the presenter.